A team of astro balloonists are stuck in space. Last month, they made contact with an unidentified spacecraft speaking a strange language. This is the balloon. Identify yourself at once. Esta es la Estación Espacial Mexicana Alpha. Por favor, identifíquese. Repito, adelante, objeto extraño en forma de globo. It's an alien craft. They might be hostile. Repito, ¿por qué están en un globo en el espacio? Wait, that's not an alien language. That's Spanish. <clears throat> Hola, buenos tardes. Este la Globo Espacio. ¿Cómo se llama? Yo soy Inés Elena Rodríguez Dolores García Molina. That's a lot of people. Hable inglés? English? Oh, sure, I speak English. <laughs> I'm sorry, my communication equipment is damaged. So all I have been receiving is some crazy stories and the scores for something called cricket. I hear Sri Lanka is 36 for 5, not out. <laughs> Whatever that means. <laughs> crazy stories? That's us! Do you have any food supplies on board? Wait, how do I know you're not a predatory alien species who wants to come and eat my cactus? Because we're not? That's just what an alien would say. She's got a point there, mate. Okay, we'll prove it. We'll tell you a new story. We've just received a transmission from... The Little Angel Theatre, Earth. A story about... Pirates! Okay, then. Um... Listen up. Fly me to the moon in your big bop balloon. Oh, oh, fly me to the moon in your big bop balloon. Oh, oh. On the edge of the sea stood a town filled with seafaring folk. Sailors, pirates, captains, mates, and rubber ducks. The town was filled with taverns and pubs where the inhabitants would constantly get upset with each other and fight. There was the Black Eye, which was famed for fist fighting. Ouch, ouch, my eye! Ah, my eye! The Bald Barnacle, which was known for those who enjoyed pulling each other's hair. Arr, my beautiful hair! Ah, my beautiful hair! But the most famous of all was the dagger in the back, which had recently started providing plastic cutlery for obvious reasons. Damn the barnacles of this plastic pilchard cutlery! Oh, it's for your own good! The dagger in the back was run by a peace-loving proprietor, a cabbage soupier named Leader Reader. And more than anything, she just wanted everyone to get along. I've got some cabbage soup here. Oh, that's yeah, that's, that's mine. mine. That's mine. 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 I was here first. No, I was. Most evenings, fights would erupt over the tiniest of indiscretions. Did you just use the indefinite article in that sentence? What if I did? <laughs> Wait, can't we all just get along? There's enough cabbage soup for everyone. But one night, the tavern door swung open. <gasps> and a tall, imposing, flame-haired figure strode in. Flame-haired? Sounds painful. It's a figure of speech. It means he had fiery, orange-colored hair. Oh, right. But he could shoot lava from his hands. What? Now we're talking. But that's a story for later. Anyway, the tall, flame-haired, mysterious figure strode in and sat alone with his back to the corner so nobody could stab him in the back and eyed the customers warily. He rested his gloved hands on the table and sat very still. The other pirates began to whisper, pretending not to look at him. That be Captain Zog. Aye, tis Zog, all right. You see the gloves? He be the most mysterious secretive pirate on the seven seas. Aye, so secretive it said he'll kill anyone who recognizes him. Zog! Shut up, you idiot. You'll get us all killed. Oh, good evening, sir. May I take your order? Uh, perhaps I can take those gloves for you. No. 
The gloves stay on. See, very mysterious. All righty. Uh, w- would you like some cabbage soup? Or today's special? What's the special? Uh, cabbage soup. I... Captain Zog was a man of few words, but a fearsome reputation. It had even reached Leader Reader's ears. But she couldn't help noticing, as she bought him a bowl of steaming cabbage soup, that he seemed to be reading his map upside down. Can I help you with that? I think it's upside down. Here. See, here's Black Rock. With what? what's that? Mount Dragon? Oh, yeah, just go around the sea monster here and turn left at the Whirlpool, and you'll meet X marks the spot in a few days. Why is this map so dirty? It's made from secret volcanic ash of Black Rock. Wait, you can read maps? Sure, it's uh, sort of my thing. I need a map reader. And a cook. And this cabbage soup is... Acceptable. Come, join my crew to find a secret treasure of the UFO. And I'll make you rich. And you can get out of this dump. Oh, it's not so bad. Oh, you stab me in the back! You stab me in the back! Oh, okay, I'll come. I be Zog. Oh, nice to meet you, be Zog. I'm Leader Reader, but you can call me Leader. What does UFO stand for, anyway? Zog led Leader Reader down to the docks, past the drunken pistol... <laughs> to where his ship lay at anchor. Ah, there she lies, my beautiful boat. I named her after my dear departed father, the most fierce pirate in these here waters, Rachel. Uh, Rachel? Aye, Rachel. Of course, I had to kill him. I could hardly be the most fierce pirate if Daddy was already the most fierce, could I? Uh, Right. Ahoy, the ship! Ahoy the shark! Captain coming aboard! And the new cook! Aye, aye, Captain. And a third eye for luck. Uh, sorry, where is that voice coming from? That's my crew. They may be inordinately scared of the dark, but a more fierce and deadly rapscallious bunch of sea dogs you've never encountered. But I can't see anyone. All I can see are a bunch of weird, ghost-bearded, three-eyed guys with wooden legs. Aye, tis them all right. The ghost beards. Aye. And a more treacherous, dangerous, and thrillingly flamboyant crew you'll not find this side of the 64 seas. I thought there were only seven seas. Aye, inflation hit the oceans hard this year. This is the mate. All right, mate. Welcome aboard, Captain. And you, Kook. If you try to double-cross us, we'll double-cross you back. And if you triple-cross us, I'll zebra-cross you, and then you'll be marked forever with the deadly knots and crosses. <gasps> Signaling to everybody that you're a big, naughty, double-crossing son of a gun. I'm just here to make soup and to read the map. So you say. Just you watch it, cookie. Mate? Yes, mate. Set a course. Ten degrees west. Sixty degrees north. 40 degrees east and 220 degrees centigrade for the oven to warm up. Aye, Captain. Right, crew, you heard the man. Weigh the anchor. It's 43 kilograms, sir! Mat the sails! Pull the gibbet! Throw the monkey! Patch the quilt! And so the ship set sail on an impossibly confusing course towards Black Rock. By day, Leader Reader would check the map. Straight ahead, Captain. This way to Black Rock and the treasure, the famous UFO. And by night, she'd cook the entire crew her famous cabbage soup, resulting in a dangerously toxic atmosphere below decks. I can taste the cabbage! The ghost beards were a strange bunch, led by the captain's promise of the UFO, a huge golden egg that the captain had promised was a nightlight. Let me tell you the story of being a ghost beard. 
What do you do when you kill a bunch of pirates and the pirates have beards and you kill the beards too? You end up with a crew who look a bit weird. You end up with a crew of ghost beards. Yep, that's us. With rum in our kegs and pills on our legs, we make great pies called Rat Surprise. We may be dead, but there's more to life than death. We're the ghost beards, and this is our song. We've been dead for way too long. I didn't know we had to die when I volunteered to be a ghost beard. Nope. I didn't know that I had to die. Me neither. We're a double crossing bunch of double crosses. You'll be crossing everybody that we come across. That's our way. When we're crossed, we get pretty cross. We don't have teeth, but we still floss. With rum and our eggs and drills on our eggs, we make great pies called rat surprise. We may be dead, but there's more to life than death. We're the ghost beards, and this is our song. We've been dead for way too long. I didn't know we had to die when I volunteered. To be a ghost beard is very inconvenient. It is to be a ghost beard. Really is. Oh, yeah, I just didn't know I had to die. To be a ghost beard. Mm. I guess clues in the title, right? Yep. One night, however, as Leader Reader left them accidentally drilling holes in the wooden ship with the drills on their legs, oh, not again! She heard a low muttering coming from the captain's cabin. Aye. And then the UFO will be mine. That idiot crew still think it stands for Ultra Fluorescent Orb, the ultimate nightlight. Ha! <laughs> well, if it helps me get my hands on it, then let them, the fools. And then no one will be able to stop me. <laughs> Leader looked through the keyhole and saw the captain taking his gloves off. <gasps> By the bubbling barnacles of Britney Spears, he's got lava coming out of his hands. That's why he always wears the gloves. Land a hard, land a hard, black rock hole. Man the bell, ring the mainsail, trim your beards, smack the elephant. Looming out of the mist was an island covered in lush tropical forest. From the treetop canopy, strange scuttling sounds could be heard, along with the rumbling of a live volcano. And somewhere in the distance, the beating of huge wings. There she blows, Mount Dragon herself, with a cave of black rock there in the middle. Soon that UFO will be mine. Hmm? I mean, ours. The UFO will be ours. Yeah! Hooray! Hooray! UFO, UFO. Disembark, crew! We're going to need all of our wits about us. Legend tells this is a deadly place for pirates. Oh, where's Leader Reader? Uh, here. Now, the map says first of all, we must cross the river. Right. Off we go, crew. Go with me. Ah. Oh, after which there'll be deadly singing medals. What? Ow, ow, ow. That, that stings. How are you ghost beards just walking through them? Wooden legs, Captain. Stings don't hurt us. Don't worry, Captain. We'll clear our path with our trills. Oh, nice work, guys. Here, Captain, take these dock leaves. They'll help with the stings. Thank you. After trudging through the newly cut path of stinging nettles, the crew found themselves in a dense, dark forest. Things scurried above their heads. Mate, what's that? Spiders, mate. Lots of spiders. And one really massive spider. <laughs> ah! Ghostbeards, I have an idea. Do any of you have the rats that you caught with you? I was going to have these guys for lunch, but why? They'll fight the spiders. Release them. Ah! But now what am I going to eat? <laughs> oh, okay. Run! <laughs> The smoking volcanic cave of black rock loomed before them. A thick, sulfurous smell filled the air. Sorry, it's the cabbage soup. Aw, man. Leader, what's that overhead? It says here there's a three-headed, fire-breathing dragon. Whoa, that was close. Captain, your gloves are smoking. Never mind my gloves. Help me get past this dragon. He sure seems grumpy. Uh, maybe he's hungry. You hungry, big guy? Three heads, all those brains. I am hungry. But head two never let us stop to eat. All he wants to do is fly. Well, 
I'm hungrier and had one at all the spiders last time. How do you like some cabbage soup? It's great for flying. Ooh. Wow, thank Ooh. you. Ooh. Wow, thank you. Ah, that's the dragon done. Look, Captain, ahead of us in the volcano. The map says, here be black rock. But it says something else on the back. I, I can't quite make it out. Never mind that. Look down there, crew. A great big pit. Oh, yeah. So it is. A really big pit. In you go. <laughs> <laughs> now the UFO is all mine. Zog had pushed the entire crew, including Leader Reader, into a giant pit and headed off to Black Rock alone to claim his prize. Inside the pit. I can't believe he double-crossed us. Why not? We would have double-crossed him given half the chance. He stabbed us in the back. I stab you in the back. We? Stop stabbing each other in the back. We need to work together. Well, what do you suggest we do? We're only good at stabbing each other in the back. And double-crossing. And catching rats. Irrelevant. Instead of stabbing each other in the back, why don't you stab your daggers into the rock, one above the other, and then we can climb out? So, we can stab the rock in the back? Uh, if you must. Hey. 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 And so Leader Reader led the double-crossing, backstabbing ghost beards out of the pit and towards the cave of Black Rock. Shiver me timbers and cover me in clam juice. Finally! After all these years of searching its mind, the UFO, the ultimate fighting object. With this, I'll finally be safe from all of those pirates wanting to top me off. All wanting to be the fiercest. Come to Pirate Daddy, you beautiful head you. Captain, stop. You're wrong. It's not the ultimate fighting object. No more than it was the ultimate fluorescent orb. What? what? Oh, oh, I can't believe these double costers. Never seen that coming. How would you know? You're just a cook with a disturbingly skillful ability to turn cabbage into something mildly mediocre. Wait, look here on the back of the map. There's some glowing writing, lit by the lava of your hands. UFO. It doesn't stand for ultimate fighting object. It stands for uniting friendship earth. What? You are. What's an earth? It's French for egg. Mm. Oh, that does make sense. After all, it was hidden by a famous French pirate called Jean-Pierre Louis René Jacques Julien Le Horrible. Or maybe you're just trying to trick me so that you can have it all to yourself. Maybe you're just trying to double cross me. Yeah. Captain Zog removed his gloves, revealing the lava flowing from his hands, and picked up the egg. Oh, what's going on? The island! It's shaking! The whole place is falling apart! Let's get out of here! Captain! Come on! The egg's too heavy! You'll never make it out! I can and I will! I came 43rd in the World Massive Egg Carrying Championships at 1546! Come on, blast you egg! Arg! The cave was collapsing around them. Volcanic ash was bursting into the air, but the egg... The egg was too heavy! If you don't leave it now, the cave is going to collapse on us! You go! No, I won't leave you! But why? Friends don't leave friends behind! You're my... friend? I've oh, never had a friend before. What's a friend? Well, it's gonna be a pretty short friendship if you don't drop that egg and come with me now. Captain Zog dropped the egg, and together they ran out of the cave before it collapsed in on itself in a cloud of ash and rock. My egg! My beautiful egg! It's gone! It's gone forever! <laughs> but it's not, Captain. After all, UFO stands for Uniting Friendship Oof, doesn't it? And now you have a friend for life. Maybe that's what this whole voyage was about in the first place. Well, that would be awfully convenient. Not very convenient for us, was it, Captain? You double-crossed us. You would have double-crossed me. No, I'd have triple-crossed you. I'd have quadruple-crossed you. Look, you guys have so much in common. You all love a bit of double-crossing. 
then there's no reason we can't all be the firmest of friends. When they returned to town, there were a few changes made to the local tavern, The Dagger in the Back. For a start, it was renamed The Happy Friend. And people often frequented it when they wanted to recover from punching each other in the face at the black eye or pulling each other's hair and beards at the bald barnacle. I've installed a new nightlight for you guys so you can stay here whenever you're in port. Ah, that's a fine thing. I'm afraid we won't be eating any more of your cabbage soup though. After the last trip we ate so much that three of us turned into cabbages, didn't we crew? Well, they can't speak on account of being cabbages, but you get me drift. That's no problem at all. After discovering the egg on black rock, I went and bought some chickens. And now I can cook all sorts of egg meals. Hurrah! I can cook pickled cabbage eggs, fried eggs and cabbage, scrambled egg cabbage delight. Hurrah! As for Zog, the pirate captain, he got what he had always desired. Some fine friends. Can you cook us up those eggs, Captain? No problem, friend. I'll boil them up with my lava hands. Before I do, now that I've got you where I want you, I'll be taking this tavern for myself. (laughs) Zog, after all we've been through, how could you? Gotcha, leader. There's nothing like a good double crossing among friends. (laughs) Hand me that cabbage. And let's crack on with lunch. Fly me to the moon in your paper balloon. Okay, I loved it. That was a great story. I love that they all learned the value of friendship. I preferred when they were stabbing each other in the back. We just need to thank the Little Angle Theater. Um, Angel. That's what I said. And everyone there for your brilliant ideas. Uh, Thank you, Jen, at Control. Aisha and Sashi. Daniel and Lindsay. Maya and Leo. Darren, Charlie and Gemma. Samuel, Lucas and Slaka. All right. Engaging tractor beam. Prepare to encounter airlock. That's so great that she doesn't think we're dangerous, isn't it? Um, but... What if she's dangerous? Ah, I didn't think of that. Nice one, Captain Stupid Pants. To follow the balloon's adventures, don't forget to like and subscribe on your favourite podcasting app. Leave a review and tell your friends. You can meet the characters, try creative activities and listen to all the stories on radioshow.paperballoon.org.uk.